beloved, I bring you greetings once again from our Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope that His grace and peace is keeping you alive. In our last episode, we looked at sin and forgiveness. Today, I would like us to reflect on some of the stations of the cross, which is also known as the Via Crucis, which we usually and highly patronize in Lenten tide, especially on Fridays. The stations of the cross is a Christian devotion highly practiced and patronized by Catholics in honor and remembrance of the suffering that is the passion and the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. History has it that this devotion developed in the Holy Land, that is Jerusalem, where it is believed that the events of the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ took place. Programs who visited this land identified some traditional routes that Jesus is believed to have passed while he was undergoing his suffering. Beginning from Pilate's house, that is a praetorium, to Golgotha, they imitated Jesus in his suffering by walking those traditional routes whilst praying. In the 15th century, the Franciscans took upon themselves to patronize and practice this devotion throughout the church. In the 16th century, it became a widespread devotion throughout Europe and other parts of the world. Most often, 14 stations are identified with this devotion, despite the fact that we sometimes add a 15 station, which is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Seven out of these 14 stations are found in the Bible, especially in the Gospel accounts. The rest are based on traditional beliefs. Have you asked yourself why was Jesus condemned and which people condemned him? Beloved in Christ, the very people that Jesus helped, the people that he fed, the people that he embraced with love, the people that he so helped by giving them source of encouragement, words of hope, and alleviating them from their pain and their suffering, are the very people who turned against him when he needed them the most. I am very sure that Jesus looked at these people with amazement. He was astonished and downhearted when they were shouting at him, Be crucified, crucify him, crucify him. Why did they do this to Jesus? Was it that they had soon forgotten the good deeds he did to them, or they have intentionally turned a blind eye to them? What they did to Jesus is not so different from what the brothers of Joseph did to him in Genesis chapter 44, verse 4, where he sent the question and the word to them, Why do you pay my good with evil? And this same verse is reiterated by the psalmist when we read Psalm 109, verse 5, where he says that, Why do you pay my good with evil? And why do you repay my love with hatred? Beloved in Christ, sometimes the very people that we held, the very people that we showed love to, the very people that we care for, we trust as our family, as our friends, People that we share a lot with are the very people who turn against us, betray us, and give us up when we need them the most. This was done to Jesus. And so I want to encourage you that when these are done to you, just look up to Jesus. Remember, Jesus did not give up. Despite the fact that he experienced this vilification, this more treatment, this condemnation, from the very people that he loved and did good to, he did not give up. He knew that at the end, truth will set him free. Truth will win the battle. And so you also, when you are going through these difficulties, challenges, you are going through this betrayal, disappointment, vilification and condemnation by friends and family, remember that Jesus first went through this. And that is why he is encouraging you not to give up. In our local parlance, there's this saying that Abwebi Bekawa na ofri wontumemu. 
that is the people that we love, we help, that we have our family and friends who tend to betray us. But never give up. Know that you cannot be buried when no soil has been created for you. Know that you cannot be buried when the whole world is against you and Christ is for you. You will surely come out victorious. Dear friend, I want you to know that nobody can bury you if God has not dug the grave for you. And no one can bring you down even if the whole world is against you and Christ is for you. On the other hand, I want those of us who are in the habit of giving people up, betraying and condemning them to desist from that. I want to remind all of us that those who do that break the eighth commandment, which says that do not bear false witness against a brother or a sister. And so if you are in the habit of giving people up, condemning them and vilifying them, ask for the grace to repent and to put up a new behavior and pay people who do you good with good. Dearly beloved, I would like us to take another reflection on the second station taken from the gospel accounts according to John chapter 19 verse 17 where Jesus takes up his cross. When Jesus said, if you want to be a follower of mine or a disciple, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me daily. He knew what he meant. Mark chapter 16 verse 24. He knew that he was going to set an example for us. And this is very clear and evident when he was condemned and he himself willfully and lovingly approached his cross and took it upon himself. Beloved in Christ, Jesus knew that that was a cross. He knew that the cross was very, very heavy. He knew that that was a challenge and an adverse task he was going to undergo. But he embraced it. He took it up and carried it. But we should also know that he was able to do this because he encountered his father to draw strength and grace from him in the Garden of Gethsemane. Dear friends, what is our attitude towards our crosses? Even if we should ask ourselves, have we come to accept the fact that as disciples of Christ, it's not all going to be rosy, beautiful, and always going well for us? Do we know that we will take up crosses in our Christian journey? And what is our attitude towards them? Jesus knew that he would definitely take up a cross at the end of his ministry. We must also, at this time in our Christian lives, come to accept the fact that crosses will come our way. Difficulties and challenges are bound to come our way. It is not always that you have to go the prosperity way. Sometimes these difficulties and challenges are there to beef us up and to increase our faith and trust in God. The attitude towards carrying our cross is very necessary. Jesus embraced his willfully and lovingly, drawing his strength from his Father. That is what we are also supposed to do as we take up our crosses and follow Jesus. Dearly beloved in Christ, I want you to remember that the wood of the cross would make no sense and would be powerless if Jesus had not accepted it, carried it, and died on it. What I mean here is, the cross that you carry will make no sense and will not bring you any victory if Christ is not the focus, if you are not following Christ, but following another person or other thing else. Take up your cross and follow only Jesus, who can only give you the strength to carry your cross and at the end also lift up the heavy burden of the cross from your shoulders and give you rest. Dear friends, there is this beautiful quote that I found which said that it is not the wearing of the cross around our necks that proves that we are disciples of Christ, but carrying the cross and following him daily. 
It is my prayer, therefore, that God will give us the grace to identify our crosses, have the right attitude towards them, carry these crosses, and follow Him daily. Beloved in Christ, in our next episode, we will still be reflecting on some of the stations of the cross. And it is my belief that God will give us the grace to imbibe these reflections and live by them. And may God Almighty bless and keep you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peace and joy.